Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're gonna talk about Netflix and some wild rumors that Netflix might buy Roku. They're looking at buying Roku as they're laying people off, as they're going into what uh, global data calls survival mode. They're still spending money on content, just the right kinds of content, and uh, they're gonna apparently look into look into rushing a Roku acquisition uh, with the purpose of trying to make money on election ads. I'm, I'm not kidding. This is, this is absolutely bonkers. Do they have the money to do this? I don't know if they have the money to do this. I actually could see it being the other way around that Roku would buy Netflix or they merge or something. And we know that Netflix is trying to get into ad supported uh, you know, services. They're gonna offer ads on Netflix and Roku's already got a model set up and it's, a, it's actually pretty good. I actually watch Roku TV more than I watch anything else. When I have time, uh, I tend to watch uh, you know, anime or paranormal stuff or you know, classic TV on a Roku channel. And honestly, if the family didn't watch a lot of the stuff they watch, I probably wouldn't have Netflix at all. You know, I, I dip in for Stranger Things because I like Stranger Things. But uh, beyond that, I don't think I would even watch Netflix because there's really not much on there that I care about anymore. Most of the shows that I watched on Netflix have gone to other platforms. So we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 271,000 subs. Thank you for the support. Geeky is sending this video out. She will be back. She's always back. And uh, yeah, let's talk about this because we did a video yesterday. Uh, talking about the layoffs at Netflix, that Netflix is actually using, I believe, uh, using the slump to kind of purge itself of, you know, activist-minded programming, activist-minded employees. I mean, they put a memo out there saying, hey, if you don't like some of our content, maybe Netflix isn't right for you. And you look at the stuff they cut, and it's very niche programming. It's all about the numbers. It's all about, you know, the stuff that pulls the big numbers, Stranger Things, Squid Game. Um, you know, YouTubers are getting shows picked up now that that's what they're, that's what they're looking at, right? That's what they're looking at. So it was pretty surprising to read that Netflix might buy Roku. But before we, we talk about that, let's, let's look at this article out here on global data. Netflix is entering survival mode as it attempts to reconcile content spend with dwindling subscribers. Uh, they're saying, Following the news that Netflix laid off a further 300 employees in the second round of job cuts, this analyst, uh, Francesca Gregory, says, like many of its increasingly cash-strapped customers, Netflix is tightening its belt. In its latest earnings call, Netflix stoked investors' concerns when it reported a loss of 200,000 subscribers. The latest layoffs should come as no surprise to those who have tracked the company's recent fall from grace. During the pandemic, Netflix's popularity reached new heights, but the company now faces significantly reduced growth prospects. Although the increasingly bleak macroeconomic outlook and rising competition uh, make cutbacks more likely, the layoffs have sparked ESG concerns. On social media, the latest layoffs come less than two months after editorial staff at Netflix's own fan site, Tadum, were let go. The site covered issues around inclusion and representation. Following the cutbacks, former Tadum editor Yvette Dion suggested Netflix was laying off staff responsible for increasing diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, Netflix has stated its commitment to promoting diversity and inclusion in its content workforce, but this commitment has recently been questioned. Further backlash will add momentum to the company's ongoing subscriber exodus. No, actually, their stock is going up, uh, I think. I think their stock is actually going up. So, look, Kickstarter did the exact same thing. Oh, golly gee willikers, here comes an iceberg and mm, we're running out of money. Sorry. Hey, it just so happens that your division and your project, yeah, you know, the projects you're working on that aren't going to make a lot of money because they don't appeal to general audiences. Yeah, we're going to have to cut those. Sorry. Sorry. And oh, yeah, you people who have been, dis, you know, in our Discord and, and Slack channels complaining incessantly about uh, the workplace and the content that we're producing here at Netflix, you know, the content that pays your salaries. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, we're going to have to let you go. So I think in some levels, Netflix is like, yeah, we're going to toss these employees overboard and we're just going to spend more money on like another Dave Chappelle special or something. Or we're going to buy Roku. So I saw this this morning. 
And uh, I about fell out of my chair because I'm like, Netflix is not in a position to buy anything right now, are they? Apparently they are. Uh, Netflix could rush a Roku acquisition to tap the $9 billion midterm election ad market. Uh, number one streamer's rapid push for an ad-supported tier could be vastly helped by acquiring the AVOD service and its technology. Netflix's desire to quickly ramp up an ad-supported tier in the streamer's reported interest in acquiring Roku may be driven by a very specific and very lucrative motivation, political advertising. There's a $9 billion pot of gold at the end of the rainbow if Netflix can get live with ads by September. Uh, Dallas Lawrence, a senior VP of Samba TV, told The Wrap, the projected $8.8 billion spent on ads for the 2022 midterms represents a massive leap from the $3.9 billion spent for the 2018 midterms and comes close to the $9.5 laid out during the presidential election. Uh, this would be the highest amount ever conjured up for a midterm election as races for the House and Senate continue to heat up. With such a robust market looming on the horizon, Netflix may view Roku, which boasts an established and successful advertising-based uh, video-on-demand infrastructure and has grown to more than 60 million domestic users, as a valuable shortcut to fuel the streaming giant's AVOD ambitions. Representatives for Netflix and Roku declined to comment. Netflix moves fast. The whole company is designed to be a lean, mean, entrepreneurial machine, uh, says this associate professor of entertainment finance at the uh, LMU College of Business Administration. Given the company identity and the financial crunch Netflix is enduring, he expects the streamer to build the AVOD side of the business at record speed, regardless of the upcoming election opportunity, which is looking like a potential added bonus. So they want to take a shortcut. They're like, who is out there that we could buy that is already doing what we want to do? And so many people have Roku devices in their house. Now, the downside to this is Roku is a great alternative to Netflix. And if Netflix buys it, well, fuck that, right? Like it's, you're, you're all watching Netflix TV or whatever. Um, the midterms will help juice their numbers. Certainly going to look good from Wall Street's angles and it will probably give them a nice boost. Um, yeah, May Netflix executives told employees the market leading streaming service was aiming to introduce its upcoming ad supported tier by the end of 2022. Sooner than expected, they have to. Uh, Netflix co-CEO Reed Hastings initially told investors that an ad-supported tier might come in the next year or two. They don't have time. They do not have time. So yeah, does it make sense? Yeah, it does. Do they have the money? No, not really. But they might figure, we'll go into debt to buy Roku and we'll make the money back uh, over the uh, course of the next year or two with uh, advertising. Roku stock, which has seen a steady decline all year, saw a brief rebound earlier this month on unconfirmed reports that Netflix might consider acquiring them. So there we go. It remains to, to uh, be seen if the two sides could complete a deal in time for Netflix to benefit from midterm election ads. Uh, Disney's purchase of 21st Century Fox didn't become official until 12 months after it was announced. Um, Sony's purchase of anime streaming service Crunchyroll stretched out nine months. Uh, even if the timing worked out, not everyone views the swirling streaming rumors as Netflix's strategic inroad to a lucrative yet polarizing new arena. I do not feel this is a Trojan horse to enter into the political ad space. Uh, Michael Lyons, chief investment officer of Juice Media, said it's, un it's likely tempting. Political advertising is extremely divisive and would likely lead to a negative brand experience. So the short term gain might not weigh or might not outweigh the long term brand impact, but they are cutting activist type employees loose. I'm just saying, it seems like they're, they're not concerned as much about one side of the aisle as they used to be. Let me just put it that way. Uh, Disney is notoriously protective of its family friendly brand. They indicated that the upcoming ad supported tier for Disney plus will not host political or alcohol commercials unlike Roku, which already accepts them. Uh, regardless of whether or not there's any actual fire to this acquisition smoke, Netflix is on the precipice of a massive new revenue generator. Political ad buyers have long yearned to possess digital precision and targeting on the most populous TV network in the world, but have never had that opportunity. So yeah, they would jump at the opportunity to advertise on Netflix. Oh my God, Netflix would be even more insufferable than it has been. 
The ability to buy Netflix inventory would ensure there would not be a second of Netflix screen time unpurchased by political ad buyers this cycle. This is a short-term and long-term strategy. Uh, they think that the ad spending next, uh, or 2024, could exceed $10 billion. Yeah, so they said with the recession looming and the prospect of layoffs and consumer belt tightening, Netflix wants to secure as much of its subscriber base as possible by giving consumers a less expensive option. Um, and yeah, Roku's already there. Roku's there. Roku's got ads. Roku's got hundreds of channels. And it's free. You know, if you're willing to sit through the ads, it's free. Tubi is free. Lots of free free alternatives and people are jumping to those instead of Netflix. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, that's really interesting though, that they are basically going to buy Roku or uh, you know, rumored to buy Roku if they do it to tap into this ad market. Is it gonna be good for YouTubers too? I hope it's good for YouTubers. We try not to get too political over here, but uh, I hope it's good for YouTubers this fall. That would be nice. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Now he's just tasty, delicious, rotten flesh meat, which I can consume and don't read into it too much. Just like our museum, the cafe, it's open to brute through it, eager to serve. I don't think this was in the show. No, run, 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 run. Oh, you got splatted. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh she was begging and what? you kicked her in the face. I don't care. Hey guys, Squid King here, and today we're in a- Not girl boss, not girl boss at all. She is not a material girl. She is not. Oh, it's Christmas time here in your mom. Nobody wants to join your mom. What? Like I can't even cook kid cuisine right. I would last about two minutes with Gordon Ramsay. What? Where is he? He's hiding. He's hiding from you. He better. Oh my god, you got the axe. Walker, does this look like Steven Universe? Let me punch him. Well, I'm just here for the wax. Okay. Ah! Right where you belong. Get in the dirt. Well, that was a combination of events I probably shouldn't have put together. Anyways, let's open this bottle too. Chica pinata. Is that official? Oh, no. There's a bootleg. Hello. Hey guys, it's Diamond Tool. Let's make a farm. Like and subscribe and buy my merch. I mean, while you're here, you guys should like really like and subscribe and buy our merch, all of which we have. <laughs> that is true. You can't run them carrying trash. And you can get away with one F-bomb per PG-13 movie. Oh, I wish I'd yeah. known that sooner. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna wrap this effort up. Yes. <laughs>